Pitch side here with the Hereford manager Paul Caddis. Is that everything you asked for this afternoon? Uh, not entirely. Listen, we've, we've obviously won the game late on. I'm being brutal honest. I thought the first half was rubbish for just a rubbish game of football. To be honest, I just thought there wasn't much in it in terms of chances both sides. But that's the if that's our minimum, then I'm excited to see what we, what levels we can get to. Second half I thought were a bit better. Uh, but just listen, delighted with the character and obviously we runs missing his penalty and then within I don't know ten seconds the ball's in the back of the net. So again, the character in this the dressing room I've got is is is, is something I'm really proud of. Top finish from Connor Stanley. Brilliant finish. Again, I'm going to mention that word again. Character didn't, didn't start today. Came on the pitch, scored the winner. So he could have easily sat and been disappointed and huffed and puffed, but he didn't. He came on, showed his quality. Brilliant finish. Uh, worked hard and played a, a vital part in the three points. Darlington got threats in there. Jacob Hazel, obviously one of those as a central striker. Um, managed to keep him fairly quiet. Yeah, the... We worked on it a lot. We know that they, they try and bring the two wingers a bit deeper at times to try and create that space to put the ball in behind for Hazel. And, and it was evident in the first half, listen, the wind was there in the first half, so it probably spoiled the game a little bit in terms of what we tried to do to play the ball forward and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, listen, Hazel's a handful. He scored 15, 16 goals or something last year in this league. So we uh, we nullified him as, as best as we possibly could. And then, listen, got to have a mention for Curtis Pond. He comes up trumps again. And, and that's the, the whole point of having a having a team and trusting people in your, in your uh, squad and, and he's been brilliant again. Adam Rooney doesn't miss many penalties for it in his career. How, how's he taken that miss today? Oh, it's not bad to lie in that. I lied. We went and won the game. Listen, if we didn't win the game, he'd have probably been a bit more. He probably feels it more than what he normally would because he's part of the staff as well and, and he's a vital part on and off the pitch. But you see again, Rooney's is just, he's a step above at times with his experience, he's not his game knowledge. and. And he's literally a manager on the pitch, and it makes my job so much easier because he's constantly organised. He's he's not the rapid striker, or he's, he's never been rapid. And that's not, not me doing a disservice. He's uh, he's just been a, an instinctive goal scorer, but he plays that little bit deeper now and brings other people into the game and talks to kills and talks to the men behind him with bisque and barbs. And he's uh, he's been a. I said it last night. Than the, he's been my best signer. No doubt it was a penalty clear trip on Bayboss. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, I think it was clever from Alex, uh, who, by the way, I thought both centre midfielders were excellent again, the second half particularly. Uh, but yet, he picks up a good position, he anticipates, gets that touch, and I think you've got to be careful in the box these days, and, and thankfully in front of the, the brilliant support as well, we've managed to get the penalty. You mentioned Jason Carey being a pest to defenders. Uh, he came off towards the end, any injuries there? No, just wasting time, to be honest. Uh, just trying to run the clock down, that's me being brutally honest. Jason Kelly, after about 40 seconds, where I was arguing with their centre half, that's him, that's what he'll do. I can hear him shouting, I'll, I'll keep going, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. So I think he caught him late after about 40 seconds, and he's just in his ear, that's not the last one I'll get you, and he's just constantly a menace. I would hate to play against him, but I'm buzzing I've got him in my team. Now, in the build-up, you told, told, said in an interview that you felt you were a jack-in-the-box uh, down the touchline, and you certainly lived up that, to that today. How much do you enjoy we up and down that uh, technical area, you know, wave your arms, yeah. waving everywhere. Yeah, listen, that's just me, that's my character, I'm not going to change him. I'm, I'm a jack in the box, as I said, and I just try and do everything I possibly can for my team and, and get behind them and keep, try and get the supporters going who I thought were, were different class. And to come, I don't know, the last time the club had 3,000 in the opening day, those guys were probably know far more than me. And I know how tough life is at the moment. We, we, with finances and stuff like that, so to get 3,000, over 3,000 through the doors, I credit this football club and, and I credit to the players because it's them that deserve the credit. They've, these fans are coming to watch these players because they've seen something that they can get behind. Yeah, you've got the reaction from the crowd towards the end of that match and you've got, now got something else to build on with another home game so quickly on Tuesday against Russia Olympic. Yeah, and we hope that we can see the same numbers again to get behind us. It'll make a massive difference for us. Uh, we will go and listen, for me as manager right now, that's the last I think about Darlington, I'll go home and but I'm staying tonight, I'll, I'll watch uh, the Russia game as quickly as I possibly can or whenever I can get a hold of it and we'll start looking towards Russia. But uh, I think it's important the players enjoy the victory tonight, they get themselves rested up but the momentum is we've got to keep building and keep building and keep building and, and that starts again on Tuesday. Well, well done tonight. Thank you, cheers.